All right, buckle up, everybody, because today we are going deep, deep into the universe, yeah. or at least our understanding of it, which, let's be honest, is getting completely oh, yeah. shaken up right now with these incredible images mm -hmm. from the James Webb Space Telescope. It's pretty amazing. You've probably seen them floating around. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. It's just right. dazzling galaxies splashed all over the news. It's true. But here's the thing. What? They're not just pretty pictures. No, no. They're causing scientists to really rethink some pretty fundamental stuff. Yeah. Like okay. the very nature of time. Time, yeah. Which is kind of a big deal. Yeah, I'd say so. So to help us unpack all of this. Okay. We are turning to a piece by a physicist. Oh, excellent. Michio Kaku. Michio Kaku. You know, the guy who always seems to have like one foot in the future. One foot in the future. That's a good way to put it. So mm -hmm. one of the things that has everyone buzzing is that some of these early galaxies, okay. the ones that formed not long after the Big Bang, right? they look yeah. way more developed than they should. Yeah. They're smaller. Smaller. Denser. Okay. And seemingly much older than our current models. Our models suggest. Suggest, yeah. Exactly. And there's one in particular. Oh, really? This tiny little galaxy okay. called GIZ2. GIZ2. Which is just mind-boggling. I, I read about that one. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the deal with GIZ2? So GIZ2 is incredibly small. Okay. Only about 300 light years across. Okay. Compared to our Milky Way is 100,000 light years. So tiny. Tiny. But here's the kicker. Okay, what's the kicker? It's shining brighter. Seriously. Than our entire galaxy. Wow. It's like a firefly outshining a spotlight. It really, I mean, how, does, how does that even work? <laughs> it's the question everyone's asking, right? Right. It really suggests that these early galaxies yeah. were forming stars at an incredible rate, yeah. much faster than we thought possible. And wow. this this is where things get really interesting because it starts to challenge our understanding okay. of the expanding universe. Can we break that down for a second? Sure. For those of us who haven't been like brushing up right. on our astrophysics lately. Okay, sure. What exactly do we mean? What do we mean? By an expanding universe. By an expanding universe. Well, it's all about redshift. Okay. So when light from distant galaxies travels towards us. Right. The expansion of the universe stretches those light waves, okay. shifting them towards the red end of the spectrum. So the farther away a galaxy is? Yeah, the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away from us. Okay. And the more its light is redshifted. Gotcha. The redshift yeah. is really the key piece of evidence okay. that the universe is indeed expanding. I'm with you so far. Okay, great. So how do these, how do these? super bright early galaxies yeah. mess with that idea? Oh, well, if everything is moving apart, right. you'd expect things further away. Yeah. The ones we're seeing as they were billions of years ago right. to look less developed, right. younger, yeah. like looking back in time. Yeah. Right? Makes sense. But these early galaxies are anything but underdeveloped. Right. They're like... It's like finding a toddler. Yes. Who can already solve calculus equations. Exactly. It For just real, it doesn't add up. Doesn't add up. Which brings us... Which brings us... The Kaku's yeah. pretty radical suggestion. Yeah. Maybe time as we understand it. Okay. Isn't actually a fundamental force. Interesting. But something that brains create. Whoa. Yeah. That's a big one. It's a big one. Yeah, it's a mind-bending idea. Yeah. But it's not totally out there. Right. I mean, Einstein's theory of relativity right. already showed us that time isn't this absolute thing. It's right. relative yeah. to the observer. And it can be warped okay. by gravity. Yeah. So Kaku is really just taking that concept right. and pushing it even further. Okay. You so know, imagine if that warping is so extreme, right. so fundamental to the fabric of the universe. Yeah that our perception of time just completely breaks down. Whoa, okay, so are we saying that these ancient galaxies seem so old because yeah. our timeline of the universe is just completely off? Well, it's a possibility, isn't it? Yeah. What if the way we perceive time, right. like this linear progression yeah. from past to present to future right. is just a simplification? Hmm. Maybe time is more like a dimension, Okay. you know, interwoven with space, Yeah. and our brains just aren't equipped right. to experience yeah. it in its totality. So like how we can only see a 2D slice exactly. of a 3D object. Yeah, like a loaf of bread. Okay. You can only see one slice at a time. Right. 
but the whole loaf exists. Okay. What if time is like that loaf? Yeah. And we're just experiencing these individual slices. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. Okay. But if that's the case, yeah. what does it mean for all the things we thought we knew about the universe? Right. Like the Big Bang. Yeah. Did it even happen the way we've always imagined it? Right. That's the really intriguing part. Yeah. You know, the Big Bang Theory mm -hmm. describes the universe expanding from this mm -hmm. extremely hot, dense state. Yeah. But it relies on our current understanding of time. Right. So if time isn't what we think it is, then that initial bang right. might not be as clear cut as clear cut as we once thought. So instead of a universe exploding outwards from a single point. Yeah, could be something completely different. Wow. It could be that the universe has always existed in some form. Okay. Constantly evolving and changing mm -hmm. in ways that are beyond our current comprehension. Whoa, that's a pretty big shift. It is. In perspective. Yeah. It's like realizing the Earth isn't flat but a sphere only on a cosmic scale. Yeah, it really is a fundamental shift. So how are scientists reacting to all of this? Well, there's definitely a lot of excitement yeah. and a healthy dose of caution. Right. I mean, these are extraordinary claims. Yeah. And extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So they're not ready to completely rewrite the laws of physics just yet. Not quite, but they are digging deeper. Okay. Designing new experiments, yeah. looking at existing data with fresh eyes. Right. You know, the James Webb Telescope yeah. has provided this treasure trove of information. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take time to really sift through it all yeah. and figure out what it truly means. It's kind of like putting together a giant jigsaw puzzle. Yes. But we're not even sure what the picture is supposed to look like yet. Exactly, but that's the thrill of scientific discovery, isn't it? We're right. constantly pushing the boundaries of what we know. Yeah. And sometimes we stumble upon something yeah. that completely changes our understanding of the universe and ourselves. It's mind blowing, really, but let's be real for a second. Yeah. All this talk about time being an illusion. Right. And the universe maybe not having a beginning. Yeah. It's a lot to process. It is a lot to process. What does it all actually mean for us here on Earth, right. living our everyday lives? That's a great question. Yeah. And it's one that philosophers and scientists have been grappling with for right. centuries. Yeah. You know, while the practical implications of these discoveries might not be immediately apparent, right. it does force us to confront some pretty fundamental questions yeah. about our existence. Like, what is time, really? Exactly. And what is our place in this vast, possibly timeless universe. Exactly. It encourages us to step back mm -hmm. from our day-to-day -day concerns right. and contemplate the bigger picture. Yeah. It reminds us that there's still so much we don't know. Yeah. And that's both humbling and exciting. So we think we've got it all figured out. Right. And then the universe throws us a curveball and says, nope, nope. Not even close. Not even close. That's the beauty of it. Uh, yeah. The universe is full of surprises. Right. And the more we learn, yeah. Yeah. the more we realize yeah. how much more there is to discover. Right. And with new tools like the James Webb Telescope, yeah. we're only just beginning to scratch the surface. This is why I love doing these deep dives. Me too. It's like we're on an adventure. It is. Exploring the uncharted territories of knowledge. Absolutely. And who knows what we'll find along the way. Right. Maybe we'll discover that time travel is possible. Okay. Or that we're not alone in the universe. Yeah. Or maybe we'll simply learn to appreciate right. the mystery and wonder of it all. Okay. Before we go down that rabbit hole. Okay. Let's bring it back to Michio Kaku and his article for a minute. Sure. What are some of the key takeaways he wants us to consider? Well, I think one of the biggest takeaways is that we need to be open to the possibility that our current understanding of the universe might be incomplete. Yeah, incomplete, like yeah. not even wrong. They're just not even close. He's challenging us to rethink some of our most fundamental assumptions, right. particularly about time. Yeah. You know, we tend to view time as this yeah. linear, unchanging thing. Right, like a straight line. Yeah. But what if it's not? Right. What if our perception of time is just a tiny sliver okay. of a much grander, more complex reality? So we're like looking at the universe through a keyhole. Exactly. We're only seeing a tiny fraction of what's actually out there. A tiny fraction. And these observations from the James Webb Telescope are giving us a peek right. through a slightly wider keyhole. Okay. 
So we're getting glimpses of things that challenge our current models. Right. And that's incredibly exciting. It's like suddenly realizing there's a whole other wing to the house you thought you knew so well. Exactly. And who knows what we'll find in that new wing. Yeah. Maybe we'll discover new laws of physics, or maybe we'll find evidence for something even more mind-boggling like yeah. parallel universes. Well, okay, now we're venturing into science fiction territory. I know, right? But I guess that's part of the fun. That's part of the fun. Exploring the boundaries of what we know. Yeah. And imagining what might be out there. Absolutely. Uh, Science is all about asking questions. Right. Pushing the boundaries, being open to new possibilities. Yeah. And as we continue to gather more data yeah. from the James Webb Telescope and other instruments, exactly. who knows what incredible discoveries await us. I think it's important to remember that science is a journey, mm. not a destination. Right. There will always be more questions to ask, yeah. more mysteries to unravel. Yeah, and that's what keeps it so fascinating. Exactly. The universe yeah. is constantly challenging us yes. to expand our understanding yeah. and to embrace the unknown. Absolutely. So to all our listeners out there, I yeah. encourage you to keep questioning. Keep exploring. Keep exploring and keep your minds open to the infinite possibilities of the universe. The cup. Because the more we learn, the more we realize how much more there is to discover. So well said. And on that note, yeah. I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive. Okay. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey through mm-hmm. time, space, and the mind-bending mysteries of the universe. Absolutely. Till next time, keep looking up at the stars and pondering the big questions. Yeah. You never know what amazing discoveries. You never know. Might be just around the corner. 